please welcome Movita Johnson Harrell, the state representative from here, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What's up, Matt Roots? Good morning. So thank you, Net Roots, for descending on Philadelphia. We love you. So I am a native Philadelphian, and I serve in Philadelphia as a whole, but my district is in West Philadelphia, where there is a combination of great poverty and great wealth. And I'm not your usual suspect for politics. I never imagined that I would get into politics. You know, I come from five generations of poverty and five generations of substance abuse, and I come from food stamps and welfare and public housing. And at eight years old, my father was murdered in front of my family. And in that moment, I lost both my mother and my father because my father died in my mother's arms and even till today, she never recovered from that. And then years later, I lost my only brother who was murdered over a girl as his five-year-old son sat in his lap. So of course, I've always been very hyper-vigilant about violence, and for many years, I self-medicated with drugs and alcohol in order to deal with that circumstance, which is not unique to people who live in my district. None of what I have been through is unique to the people that live in Philadelphia, but one thing that I realize is that those circumstances often immobilize people, often take their power, and often dis it does not allow them to actually excel. So many years later, you know, I'm one of those late bloomers. I went back to school at 30 years old and with four children and two jobs. At 30 years old, I got my high school diploma. And I got clean from drugs and alcohol. And then I went on to spend the next five years in college with four children and two jobs and a husband who was the figurehead, like the Queen of England, who just sat there, looked pretty. <laughs> By the way, I lost the zero and found a hero. Where's Yancey? <laughs> My man's right there. <laughs> So I spent five years, and in 2004, I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with five degrees. The last of which is a master's in social work, and for over 20 years, I've advocated for those who are less fortunate, for the marginalized and the disenfranchised, those who suffer with mental illness and intellectual disabilities and chronic homelessness and substance abuse, because who better to deal with people with these issues than the people who are closest to the problem? So as I became successful, I made a conscious decision to stay in my West Philadelphia neighborhood because we were that family. There's always a family in the neighborhood that all of the children are attracted to that household. And we were that house. We kept fruit roll-ups in the cabinet and juice boxes in the, in the refrigerator. We rescued pit bulls. We, re we rented 15 passenger vehicles and shoved people's kids in and took them up to the Poconos and took them up to the beach. And in many instances, this was a child's first experience experience with sand beside the sandbox at the rec center. And we were that family because I figured with my hypervigilance with violence that if I could save the community, then my children would be safe. And in the summer of 2007, July to be exact, my two sons were 14 and 16 and they came into my bedroom and they said, mom, we know nine boys murdered in this neighborhood. And as I consoled my sons and listened to my sons, my heart began to melt. And when my sons left the room, and by this time I had my hero, when my sons left the room, I turned to my husband and I said, it's time to go. My black sons will not become statistics on the streets of Philadelphia. On January 15, 2008, I packed my family and I left Philadelphia. I moved to Lansdowne, Delaware County, a 20 block radius, dry town, you can't even buy a beer, and everybody know everybody's dog's name and I thought we were safe. And on January 12th, my son went to Philadelphia to pick up his sister just to be a good brother to make sure that she was safe. At 12.44 a.m. on January 13th, 
my son died of four gunshot wounds. My 18-year-old son, Charles Andre Johnson, was murdered in a case of mistaken identity as he went to pick up his sister. Two boys walked up to the car that I had just bought my daughter, put four bullets in my son because they had had a beef over a boy the day before about a girl. And I lost my son, and everything inside me broke. So as my son lay cold and dead on that slab, in a body bag zipped up to the neck, I promised my son, until I took my last breath, I would do everything that I could do to fight this problem. <laughs> January 15, 2011, exactly three years to the day I left Philadelphia, I wrapped my son in a white sheet and I put him in the earth. So I tell people, you can't move away from this problem. And if it hasn't touched you yet, if we keep going at the pace we're going, it's going to touch you eventually. Three months to the day my son died, I created the Charles Foundation. We have been fighting to empower young people to make better decisions other than picking up guns. And I got tired of running to legislators, begging them to fix the problem, and they did nothing, so I made a decision to run. So on March 12, 2019, the 190th district made history electing the first hijabi Muslim woman to the Pennsylvania legislature. And on my swearing in day, a Republican evangelist decided to do this whole prayer. Fire and brimstone, y'all. Where she called on Jesus 13 times, she thanked President Donald Trump for standing beside Israel against Palestine. And you know what the truth is? She didn't hurt me. She didn't hurt me because I knew being the first, breaking that glass ceiling, that there would be shards coming down. When you are the first, you got to accept what comes with it. I actually saw it as a blessing. It allows us the opportunity to have the conversations about diversity, diversity and inclusion. If you are not at the table, then you are on the menu. Who better to address the issues in the state house of poverty and marginalization than someone who has experienced it? So wherever you are in this atmosphere, make sure that you claim your authenticity and you stand strong and you stand proud, but you make room for your sisters and your brothers who don't look like you. tested and built for this challenge. And I want to thank my sisters and brothers who came before me that helped clear the path. I am not the first and I will not be the last. And the last thing I want to leave you with, if you are not a part of the solution, then you are a part of the problem. Include everybody. Thank you.